and one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first Off the Record episode, a show where we discuss weekly news around Chico, California, and Chico State. The date is August 28th, 2013. I'm Jeff Barron, the video editor at The Orion, and joining me right now is Quinn Western, the managing editor at The Orion. Quinn, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell you what you do. Tell you tell you what you do at The Orion. <laughs> Well, I am in charge of all the online content, the website, the newscast, and making sure I put out all the fires in the newsroom. That's good. We have lots and lots of fires at the newsroom, believe <laughs> me. Uh, introducing our other panelist, Ethan Snee, videographer here at the Orion. Ethan, tell us about yourself. Uh, I'm Ethan Snee. I'm recently uh, acquainted with everybody from the Orion. I just started. Um, I'm a senior at CSU Chico, uh, ecology major, and uh, glad to be here. His real title is actually much longer than ecology. We just talked about this earlier, but for the sake of time, we'll cut down yeah. on that. Allison Weeks, opinion editor at the Orion. Allison, please tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Allison. I'm opinion editor, so my job is to make sure the opinion section is the best that it can be. Um, I'm also a senior, but I'm a journalism major, minoring in business. Excellent, excellent. So I have brought you all today with these cool little titles and this cool little show uh, to talk about the weekly news that might have interested us, interest us, or brought up cool things, or just give us our little opinion about little flavor things in Chico. Uh, so this weekend is the alcohol ban on Labor Day. It's a big deal. Um, Allison, do you have any more details on this? Like bring it brings up the speed. What's the deal? Well, I know that only on Labor Day, alcohol is only banned on the Sacramento River. And some people are very upset about this restriction because they used to be able to drink on the river during Labor Day. But I think it's really good that they finally banned alcohol on the river because it's something that needed to be done. Uh, why did it need to be done? Well, it needed to be done because, um, you know, people get too drunk when they're drinking on the river. Some people drown. And like in the case of Brett Olson last year, he, he went missing for like a week and then they finally found him. And it's, it's just healthier. It's better for the community. Gotcha. Does anyone here feel that the ban goes a little too far and that it basically, since it affects everybody, you know, not just any certain people, you know, like it, it, should everybody be necessarily stopped from drinking um, because of one person's death? I mean, I'm playing devil's advocate. These don't necessarily represent my opinions. I'm just trying to, you know, stimulate discussion. Um, well, it does bring up the thought that it has been alcohol has been banned before it didn't exactly work back then so I don't know if people are really in favor of that now because it kind of does bring up a point that um, people have a right to do a lot of what they whatever they want so why impede on those rights True. yeah yeah I'm gonna agree with Quinn on that I mean the people that that do go there to drink I mean people are responsible I mean I know when I go there and I float I'm responsible for myself, and uh, it's not. It's not. I don't think it's the city's res like responsibility to keep me in check. I can keep me in check, and you know the people that are responsible will be responsible, and the people that aren't responsible. Do you really think they're going to follow what the city says anyway? That's a good point. Um, yeah, I, I think it goes a little far because I mean, people that are going to drink, they're going to drink anyways. Uh, I don't think it's really going to stop anybody. In fact, it. Probably, if anything, I feel like there's even going to be more illegal things happening. Like there's going to be more people arrested because, you know, they're doing the whole crackdown thing. So, or maybe people will just stay at home and drink. I don't know which is worse. I mean, <laughs> having more parties in like the city of Chico, like to even just cram even more people in and have like crazy parties, or to have people swimming and drinking. I mean, swimming drinking is not the most winning combination, to be honest. But. Yeah. Um, I mean, has there any? Has, does anybody know offhand if there's ever been any other deaths besides Brett's uh, last year, or was that like the first time that's ever happened? I think there was a few, uh, quite a few years ago. Has have any of you gone swimming um, on the Sacramento River during Labor Day weekend? No, I haven't. Uh, 
Yeah, I went I went floating once, but I mean, it wasn't for that long. I floated for like 20 minutes and then got out. How was it, actually? Because I think you're the only person here that actually has experience floating. It was, I mean, it was a little crowded. And I just went with my, I went with my brother and friends, and it was, it was nice. It was. But it was, yeah, a little crowded, a little, you know, it's all right, though. It well, was a fun time. Well, since it does. Since it does get really crowded during the Labor Day float, I have a feeling they're going to have a really hard time trying to crack down on this. Try, try to crack down the alcohol on the river. Um, one thing about also drinking is the fact that it creates, um, I guess, not pollution, but like litter in the river. Was that like a big, I mean, I've never been to Beer Can Beach because it's like, I mean, it's named Beer Can Beach because yeah. beer cans. Like, has anyone actually seen pictures? Like, how bad is it really? Like. Well, yeah, actually, after every Labor Day, there's a group of students that goes out there and cleans up. It's uh, It can get pretty messy out there. That seems, I mean, I'm all, I mean, I, I'm all for just letting people do kind of whatever they do as long as they don't harm anybody else. But mm -hmm. also the environment, I mean, I feel like that's such a sloppy thing to just do just to like drink on the river and just throw your bottles wherever and they kind of just float down and just ruin everything. Because it's like Sacramento River is, I don't know, it's kind of, it's not nice, it's nice. And then you like yeah doing that whole thing i don't know I like that. not a fan so do we uh excuse me for a moment i had to drink some water oh speaking of which drink water from my orion cup i'm sorry my camera is really terrible so you can't even Fancy. see it. oh look see oh, quinn's like trying to show me up quinn's trying to show me up right now by bringing her up on the little cup i don't have an orion cup so i don't even want to drink out of my water anymore <laughs> <laughs> the orion cup by the way for those who don't know is basically like the the Oscar award for like writing a good story or doing a good content for the week uh, at the Orion when you're yes. doing critiques. So I've got one for I, first week of school. First week of school. I feel, I feel proud right now. I'm, I just have to show That's it awesome. off. I'm going to do all sorts of crazy stuff with this cup. I'll be like climbing Mount Everest. And I'm just like, yeah, look, look what I got. It's amazing. Um, so that said without alcohol ban, uh, let's just move on to the next topic. Cause I think most people are pretty, uh, they, they're they're not really for the alcohol ban. They feel like it's futile and it's only going to create more problems. I think is that right? Is that can we all agree on that? Most people think that, yeah. Okay. I can see it going both ways. I can see both sides of the argument when it really is a huge danger. I mean, um, I've heard so many people argue that why wasn't this ban implemented years ago before someone drowned? And that's true. I mean, the I mean the bottom line is that no one should have to die when these kind of things happen up because I mean that's just that's just dumb. It's dumb, and it yeah it should have never happened, but it did happen, and the fact that it did happen makes a lot of people upset. So, anyhow, moving along, um, <laughs> this is a softer piece than uh you know much more serious alcohol ban, but we got the the new coffee shop, and let me tell you guys, let me tell you guys about the coffee shop. So uh, originally the coffee, the, blah, 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 the common grounds was located uh, below like the basement of um, what's it called BMU the BMU yeah it's the big yeah. old glass nice building it's got all these flag mm -hmm. hanging from the ceiling it's really fancy and there's a coffee shop there believe it or not but it was like buried down into the the study area um, one floor down and they moved it up to where I think there used to be offices there and it's like now it's like smack dab right there in the middle it's facing the quad. Um, facing the, the library, li library side, the library side. And yeah. It's, I like the location much more because it gets a lot of more traffic. And in fact, I did a whole, I did a whole video on like, you know, why they moved and stuff like that. But one thing about the coffee shop is about the spoons. And oh. I, I was going to do an exclusive video just on the spoons. And, you know, I normally have it with me. It's in the other, you know, I'm actually going to go grab it. Quinn, you had something to talk about the spoons, right? Please, oh yes, please, please continue about the spoons. I need to go. <laughs> I need to go grab another room. Excuse me. Yeah, Jeff came back down to the Orion yesterday and showed me these wooden spoons that they have in the coffee shop. I just wanted to go there just for the spoons. Um, of course, the coffee is great and the drinks that they have are awesome. But I, I don't know why I got so excited about these spoons. Um, I went there with a friend and I grabbed a spoon and he came out with like five. He said, "Do you want a spoon?" And we were just overly excited about um, eco-friendly. Right. What? So, oh, there it is. So they're back. Oh, let's see this thing. So this spoon, on blur vision, on blur vision, look at it. So like, Ooh. oh yeah, see fancy. That? It's not very. It's like it's very shallow, but man, is it sturdy? Like you could spank your children with it, or you could like, I don't know. Like it's reusable. It's reusable, pretty pretty much. Like 
I walked in there and this was like the first thing I saw because I'm a sucker for these kind of things because, you know, what they, <laughs> what they normally use wooden spoons is this like this little stick, this little coffee stirrer. And then, you know, switching from this to this, you're just like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My coffee is going to get so mixed. It's going to get just uh, like it's just going to be this tor this torrent of cream and sugar. It'll be perfect. And uh, because of the spoon. And I did a whole interview uh, with the managing the manager of, of uh, the retail. God, what's her title? Of Common Grounds? Yeah, the retail of Common Grounds. Or retail. Re you know what I'm talking about. The manager of Common Grounds. Uh, and she had to do had to do with the AS sustainability thing that, that's been going on with Chico. Where we're trying to become more um, sustainable. We're trying to become, like, you know, more green in general. And this is one of the things because it's a spoon that is coming from a renewable resource. It's not made of plastic or anything like that. that um, and yeah, and I'm so glad they're doing it. Uh, one, because they're doing it because it's green, but because it's a spoon, that's awesome. So, I mean, okay, I'm done talking about it because- We're I, talking with talking about these spoons. I swear to God, I, I told everybody in the Orion room who would listen about the spoons. I'm just like, listen, tell, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Do you know if they use sustainable cups at the Common Grounds too? I believe they do. I bought a coffee okay. there not too long ago and I looked on the bottom and said compostable. Um, and it, the cup felt pretty different, I think. Well, it's <laughs> pretty eco-friendly. Yeah, I, I touched it and I could just suck in like the greenness about it. It was amazing. Um, it had that eco-friendly feel to it. It did. It had, like, <laughs> it had a leaf on it. So, you know, with the leaf oh, means... Oh, that's like no. It must be. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> So quickly, so moving off that topic, um, we got a long, we, uh, we actually don't, we're going to tell you a little bit behind the scenes. We don't actually know how long we want the show to be. We just bring up a few topics, talk about it, and then move on and see how it goes. If you guys like it, please tell me. Um, I really enjoy doing stuff like this. So if you're interested and you want us to continue doing this kind of thing, maybe a little bit longer, please let us know uh, in the comments on YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but to bring up another topic, uh, our last topic is App Tracker for Safety. Uh, yet again, Allison, I think you have a little bit, uh, you know more about this than I do, um, unless you don't. I actually don't. It was actually a news story that uh, our news editor, Nick Carr, pitched. And what he was saying about it, it's kind of scary. Like, your friends can track you, like, wherever you are, just using an app just to make sure you came home safely. But like, what if somebody steals their phone? Like what's gonna happen? Um, even short of that, um, I don't know if it was called fi find my friend or what, but even if someone you think is your friend is really just a stalker, I mean, um, has anyone been friends with, on Facebook with that really creepy person and then all of a sudden you just block them? It's like, oh yeah, I don't wanna be friends with you, you're a creepy stalker. I mean, this, this app freaks me out. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Ethan, do you want to weigh on this? Yeah, I mean, I just I agree with both Allison and Quinn. This is a it's it's scary. Mm -hmm. I mean, why do you want everybody to know, maybe all your friends to know where you are at yeah. any given time? I and mean, I guess. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. The point of it. The point of it is that as soon as you get home, your friends can see that you made it home safely. But I'll just send my friends a text. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's Save that's time. what I true um i'm gonna make this a little personal and tell you why i actually have used um find my friends uh the built-in apple app uh for iphones i use it all my entire family we've all shared our location together so i mean it's kind of useless i mean useless i almost said useless god uh useful because uh i i get to know when people are leaving i mean it, it's a family thing and i don't personally i mean i'm not i'm not personally thinking that I'm like going out and like doing a drug deal or something. And my parents are like, why are you in that shady alley? And like, how did you know about my shady alley dealings? And then, you know, forget about that. Um, it's just that it, it comes as like this convenience thing where I can kind of figure out like if, if I wake up in the morning and I'm home, and I'm just like, oh, where my, where'd everybody go? And I look at the app and I'm like, oh, okay, everybody went here, or here, or here. Um, and you can kind of just get a good idea of just like, you know, checking in and checking out. I don't know. I, I, I think it, it just depends on family to family. Like I personally don't mind sharing that kind of, yeah. that kind of thing but uh i believe this addresses a bigger issue where i think this is good because people are now becoming more worried about their privacy um where they weren't initially before uh i remember a couple many years back when 
you know, people constantly start talking about, like, or constantly keep checking into different areas and they're like, oh, I'm here, I'm here, like, at this restaurant enjoying fun times or doing whatever. And I'm like, it always made me, uh, I was kind of mm-hmm. like, uh, it's probably not a good idea to really do that because, like, why would you share that? Like, there's no, there's no benefit really to sharing that other than you, people know where you are and they can meet up with you if they're in the local area. Um, but now people are kind of becoming, you know, with the dawn of the whole NSA prison project, um, I think people are starting to think like, oh, maybe I should try, maybe I, maybe I treasure my privacy more than I, I, I thought initially. And it, it kind of makes people think, um, what do you guys think? Um, I think even though we were initially freaked out by the app, uh, maybe that is the way that technology is going. It does appear that way. I mean, Facebook, the cost of Facebook is our privacy. And eventually that's the way that I think it's going to become just common. Anybody else want to weigh on this? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I can understand, like you said, you use it for uh, for your family, right? You know, you keep in touch with your family, you know, where they are. And that's that's completely understandable. And, you know, what Quinn said, yeah, this, this pretty much is how the world's going now. I mean, with the technology as it is now, you know, Facebook, you tag yourself where you are. Uh, Google Plus, if anybody ever uses that again. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> And, uh, yeah, but it's still, to me, it's still something, I mean, I, I do have a private life that I don't share on Facebook, you know, I have friends and if I want to share it with them, I'll share it with them, but not everybody, not, you know, the, however many people I have on Facebook need to know where I am all the time, what I'm doing, you know? Yeah. And I'm sure everybody has that one friend that just talks constantly or just has constant posters about just everything that's happening in their life. And it's not like always interesting or just like uh, it's just like it's just too much and sometimes i have to like just start blocking those posts like it i hate to say it but because sometimes it happens to friends who have had kids and they just start spamming the feed with like every single day just like oh look what he's doing he's living oh that's amazing (laughs) i mean like i mean i i love babies but it's just you know i i I get there's a a line to be drawn i get tagged and my friends kids baby pictures it drives me crazy they tag they tag they tag people who yeah, are not in the like, picture look the at picture. look at my little oh. and a lot of they're really cute kids but now when you're posting like five pictures a day i have to explain that's not me do you, do you tell them physically or not physically yeah do you like do you tell them down you're just like oh you, you what are you doing well, what's going on <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> like you like duck behind the camera and i was just like uh bleh. oh sorry about that yeah do you like do you have to like physically tell the person to like dude don't tag me in this or like do you just do it on your own um i just ignore it i don't i don't want to hurt her feelings cuz she was my babysitter oh exactly oh. and so i mean she had to put up with me all those years like hiding my blanket and pretending i couldn't go to sleep because i couldn't find my blanket and i'd be up all night and so i just i just don't have the heart to tell her no don't tag me in your kids baby photos <laughs> <sighs> Allison, do you have anything to add to this? Um, well, I definitely feel like social media makes us feel more exposed than we want to be sometimes. So, like, people should definitely try to not post as much on Facebook to, like, value their private life. They got to keep their private life private. <laughs> Yeah, I'm finding myself more and more just like, I mean, I didn't really post that much on Facebook to start with, but... Same with me. Uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I, I guess I never really was that kind of person, and I feel like I almost, I'm almost flaunting if I post anything on Facebook, but sometimes I feel like it's necessary because it's like I want to reach people, and I still need to use Facebook because that's what everybody uses, and mm-hmm. it's a really convenient tool for, like, you know, connecting with people. And not that, I, like, I hate it or anything, it's just... I don't know. Maybe maybe everybody's just like you know trying to figure out what exactly is like what are the the unspoken rules of like the internets, yeah. and uh, we're internet to... etiquette. Yeah, internet. Et- there you go. That's a much better way of putting it than what I did. I didn't even unhidden rules. I don't even know what I'm talking about now. <laughs> Anyhow, does anybody else have any other topics they want to bring up before I close this out? Uh, I just want to keep this a little bit shorter than normal, um, so people get a good idea. I'm gonna take your seat. Don't, don't get the app. Oh, go get the app. <laughs> Oh, don't get the app. Do you know what the name of the app is? I think it's Find My Friend. I don't. I don't app? exactly know. Ugh. Don't get that app. Download the Orion app. Instead. Oh yes, we do. Well, that's a good one. Oh, we do. We uh, the oh. Orion has a app. Uh, I don't have my phone near me because I threw it on my bed yeah. because it was making noise. Yeah, get get your news. Uh, watch the newscast. You can get everything on the app. And 
we're starting Insta Tuesday, and which is a competition between our readers and our photographers. So you see something cool around Chico? Take a picture, tag the Orion in it on Instagram, and it can show up on the website, our new website, which launches Monday, and in the newscast. What? That was a lot there, I know. Oh, it sounds like you almost had a speech there. Also, your camera's no, getting I really, really dark. <laughs> I don't know if you want to like, turn on a light in there or something. Uh, just saying. Actually, oh, wait. Sorry about that. Oh, oh there we go. I, sh I should have mentioned it earlier because it was getting dark like halfway through, and I was just like, I know, the sun went something? down so quickly. Oh, no. The sun goes down, guys. Breaking news. Uh, <laughs> is there anything else we want to talk? I think that's it. Yes, yeah, so go out. Uh, you can go up to the App Store. Just type in the Orion in the search bar, and it'll come right up. Um, there's actually quite a bit of promotions that we have with it. Uh, if mm -hmm. you go around the the gauntlet areas or the, down in the quad, you can actually like show like sometimes they're like, oh, show us you have the Orion app on your phone. We'll give you. Uh, I don't know what do they, what do they give you usually like food? Is it food? Coupons? You can be entered in raffles, and also, but on the app soon to soon to come. Uh, there will be coupons on the app that you can show uh, businesses get free sandwiches or whatever business. I don't remember exactly what's going to be on the apps, but stay tuned. Excellent. The best part is the app is free. It yes. Is. It's, it's so free. It's so free that we're giving it away for free. That's how free it is. It's super free. Yeah. Nothing better than free 99. Can't, can't beat it. Cannot beat it. Um, and with that lasting event, oh no. Again. Allison, yeah. that's twice. I know. I apologize. I'm sorry. Too many fires. Oh my goodness. Uh, is there a way you can mute your mic real quick? No. Yes. What? Can you mute? Oh, 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 it's, my, oh it's good. No, we're fine. Oh, it was a quick one. It's fine. Oh, it was, wow. Quick one. Oh yeah, I should have muted it. I don't know what. New to this. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's our very first episode. We're allowed to have tons I'm of mistakes. Sure wondering who this oh, is yeah. behind me. Oh. Andre yeah. Bayek and Casey Gardner, also former Orionites. Um, that we are putting on a show called Off the Record to be on the Orion.com tomorrow. So you guys should check it out. You guys are on the show. Casey Gardner is former editor in chief of the Orion, and Andre is former news editor. Excellent, excellent. I hope they do whatever they can to promote this because because <laughs> I'm I'm really enjoying this right now. Uh, so that's all the time we have for this week. Um, we might make it more common thing. We don't really know. We need your feedback. We need to figure out exactly uh, where it's going to go. Um, we're trying something new, and I hope it sticks. And that's all we have for this week. So until next time, guys, this is Jeff Barron signing off about <laughs> things. Yeah. No. Not doing that. For more information on our stories, you can go to theorion.com.